What's up guys, Ken's here. Since Mobile Cool is done, some of you are saying, Hey bro, you're doing it wrong. The radiator is too big. It looks terrible. It's not supposed to be there either. Well, today, let's talk about it. Apparently, this is not the one you can get from a normal gaming store. None of it is a PC component, nor the fittings or the pump. The benefit of using a car radiator, cost, surface area, and maintenance. And don't worry, I'll cover it later. We all know well about World Cool, especially for the show and for yeah, overclockers. I had my CPU overclock 0.6 GHz on stock coolers. So step up more frequency, there is a good opportunity to do something different. And then we hit about 0.88 GHz overclocking, 3. Point, well not that much to 8 GHz on both core with 1.5 volt core voltage. Holy shit. for accurate tuning experience. I put my PC overnight just for doing the Windows update and down some stuff. Stuff? Yeah. Before tweaking the clock, I ran some stress tests, heat up the radiator for hours, cold evening, 3 pm. Room temperature about 30 degrees Celsius, time for overclock. Why not? With 3 GHz 1.394 volts, Cinebench result show 55 degrees Celsius, 10 degrees Celsius temperature drop from the stock cooler to water cool. Mm, water cool. Alright, it looks better with the lights on. 3.3 GHz under 1.488 volts, ideal 64 detected thermal drilling. Then we tweak a little bit more. I noticed the setup of my desk actually um, limited airflow around the radiator. I placed my hands on fins, it was so warm, even bunch of hot air are being caged surrounded. So I placed a stand fan not only to enhance airflow, it also cools me down. Step forward then! 3.3 GHz under 1.5 volt Cinebench showing noticeably stable and increase in benchmark. Max 10, 68 degrees Celsius. Idea 64 still remain uncomfortably hot. And logically, we try to step back. 3.26 GHz under 1.488 volt Cinebench result in 64 degrees celsius and ideal 64 still 80 degrees celsius well let's ram prime 95 and hopefully it will comfort me a little all right all right then i see i know what you're saying ah, looks like i expect too much on the car radiator whatever it is it reached the limit of thermal efficiency cooling efficiency Alright then, whether I like it or not, I think we need a fan. There's a 200mm case fan on my other PC. We pull it down and stick on my red. We need one more. There's the only one we have. Whatever. So, and see how far it goes about 32% fan surface coverage on the radiator. We go to BIOS again and again. Eventually, I found that 1.5 volt is the stable voltage for 3.28 gigahertz. Not to mention the compatible temperature. So that's it. Prime 95, 64 degrees Celsius. Ideal 64, 74 degrees Celsius. And Cinebench, 58 degrees Celsius. And in this moment, we also hit the highest flow we ever had in the Cinebench from increase of voltage and make it even more stable. Now this part is about physics and this will talk about how easy it is to fill up and drain the system and we also cover mixed metal and electrochemical reaction. Before I forget, about cost. In Malaysia, a complete 240 liter custom loop costs around 1.6k ringgit Malaysia. 
but my build cost me just 200 plus 27 coolant and distill so total below 230 ringgit in Malaysia you know what DIY just don't blame me about professional I'm not professional either well it works like this how to fill it up fill up the system from the predicate like the car do until water is equilibrium with the reservoir oh, this is not about the car keep filling it until the desired water level run the pump water fill up the whole block and tubing this process called bleeding air escape from the radiator and the reservoir remember a hole i drill for run the tube inside the reservoir is exposed to the atmosphere the bleeding done close the pressure cap this moment the radiator is sealed sealed stop the pump small amount of water return from the upper tank because there is air inside the radiator air can be expand or compress however the water settle at the certain point inch away from the upper tank vacuum inside the radiator stop the flow day after day the water level where it settled down will raise due to the repeat heating of the system this is hydrostatic principle just like an upside down pebble works at the drinking side the water is exposed to the atmosphere but the same pressure can apply to the tank pressure inside the tank is lower than the atmosphere or the drinking side of the bowl thus the tank is creating a vacuum the water will not overflow even they are in a different height the proper PC liquid cool equipment ensure a completely closed system even though your radiator is mounted on the top of the PC your reservoir will not overflow due to the level of the radiator is higher than the reservoir what about draining the system well as simple as flushing a car cooling system unscrew the drain plug located at the bottom tank the water from the radiator started to escape at the same time it drains the reservoir too but you must have seen or heard about siphon before so a tube connected at the bottom tank run inside to the reservoir tank, tube, and reservoir filled with water they are in the same pressure as the drain plug unscrew, water started to escape from the whole radiator this create a vacuum that pulling the water out from the bottom tank, tube, and reservoir the atmosphere pressure pushing on the water surface in the reservoir until the siphon stop I think I probably cover how the system works. Now, this is about the fluid properties, the mixed metal, and the longevity. Whether or not it's safe to use glycol based coolant in the computer water loop. So, let me just quickly make a final answer. Try not to be narrow minded and you will be fine. So, this is about the pump. So, the pump that I get is the variable speed pump. I set it to max flow rate at all time about 550 liter per hour or we can say 0.3889 times 10 power negative 3 meter cube per second impeller is made from plastic but not sure about shaft anyway i don't think the shaft is important to know as it isn't exposed like the impeller do let me just eliminate that fittings are brass and block is copper their properties are close, so we eliminate that. Radiator is made from aluminum. However, I decided to take all the possible metal into the topic. Aluminum, brass and copper. In an automotive perspective, proper coolant matter very much. I never think an all-purpose coolant that can pick up off the shelf is a good choice. In fact, it is horrible. A term called use only manufacturer recommended coolant. Trust me, engineers know your car better than you do. So that's why some automotive companies come out their own formulation on their OEM coolant, which treated your system better. And the famous aftermarket coolant used their own different formulation, but sometimes expensive just didn't do that much. You know, nothing lasts forever. 
is formulated to last a certain number of years and must be changed as an important preventive maintenance procedure. So have your system flush and refill. The same is that concept here. Fortunately, automotive coolant do nothing to hurt your water loop system. Ethylene glycol provides good heat transfer properties. Increase boiling point, decrease freezing point, with other formulation gives the better lubrication in the system and compatible with hoses and seals. The main key is here, it is corrosion resistant. I mean, galvanic corrosion resistance in some points. The corrosion inhibitor. Automobile cooling system made from multiple different metal, included uh, aluminum, cast iron, brass, copper, and so on. And the good formulated coolant playing a biggest role here. So conclusion then, a good formulated automotive coolant is fine to your tubing, block, and seals, but glyco-based coolant is bad to your rigid tubing, the PEPG. So be sure you never run glyco-based coolant with your rigid tubing. And have yourself understand what coolant you are going to use. No cheap antifreeze, no excuse for periodically maintenance, even you are using the professional gear. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more videos like this. And I just love to learn everything.